called a ridiculous blessing. And what he preached about was he preached about Sarah, when how how Sarah, how she laughed at the fact when the Lord told her she was going to conceive. And he called it a ridiculous blessing. And he said something that has been with me, and I know that's been 20 years. He said, listen, whenever the Lord gets ready to do something, he will provoke your heart to begin to pray it out. Because he's ready for it to manifest in the earth. So I've always been the type that waits on the Lord to begin to lead my spirit to how I need to pray concerning something. So I don't spend a whole lot of time unless I know it's time for something to happen. I let the Holy Spirit lead me in prayer. Because when it's time, what I'm saying to you is, it's when the Lord is ready to do it, he'll, put you, he'll have you to pray about it. Because he cannot manifest in the earth except a man pray about it first. See, prayer is what causes heaven and earth to come into agreement, into sync. So if the Lord is ready to bless you with the new home, guess what he's going to have you to do? You gonna start praying about it. All of a sudden, the desire gonna hit you for it. Uh huh. The desire gonna hit you. You all of a sudden, you know, I just thank God for a new place. You know what I'm saying? I do. I just thank God. I thank God for for a new house. I I, I thank Him for it. And see, because while He's getting ready to to manifest that thing in the earth, He's getting ready to bring. I got some coffee. He's getting ready to bring that thing to pass and all in your life. So I wait on God. But that is a art of being someone that understands prayer. Someone that understands how prayer sets up. I don't claim to know it all, but I yield myself to God as it relates and that's how the Lord will do when it is time for something he will provoke you and when you need to pray about it you got to understand something y'all the enemy would love to distract you in every area of your life do you hear me there's five areas y'all know the five areas he would love to distract us in all areas of of that so if the Lord could have me praying about uh, a Jackson Street when I should be praying about Cobb Avenue what has he done he's just distracted me and although I'm praying and I think that I'm all right because I'm praying but I'm not praying on point see I'm missing the point I'm not where I need to be concerning the prayer so what I do is I allow the Holy Spirit to talk to me concerning things when it's time to do it uh, and then you will just see poof it'll manifest that's how they'll say God I didn't even know she was planning on doing that but then poof there it is it's the manifested because I waited on the timing of the Lord in order for it to happen. See, and another thing about that, I hear your Holy Spirit, and another thing about that is, is that gets you out of your desires, your fleshly desires wanting things. You see, it gets you out of that because a lot of stuff, our flesh will be pulling at God for. God help me today, I hear the Holy Spirit. Our flesh will be pulling at things, wanting certain things, and it gets you out of that realm and locks you into what the spirit would have for you, puts you in the right place at the right particular time. What was that feedback? Concerning what it is that God would have or desires to give. See, because you could be, like I said, you all, you praying on Jackson Street, where really you supposed to be praying for Cobb Avenue. So it puts you in a right place of being what the Psalm says. Psalms 37 says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, that he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, see what the understanding, the full revelation of that, Rhoda, is, is most people th tend to think that when it says he would give the desires of your heart, they tend to think that that means he's going to give me what I want. No, it's saying the desire that he's placed in the heart because the Lord will place inside of the heart what he desires for you to have because he knows when you should have it. 
Your desire to have something could be at age 22, but you have not developed what it is that's needed to keep that. You don't pay bills like you're supposed to. You're not committed like you're supposed to. But here you want it at 22. Why? Because you want it to appease people. You want it so you look a certain way with people. But the desire when God gives it is at 28 when you're ready. Because now you know how to pay bills like you're supposed to. Now you know how to be efficient like you're supposed to. So it says he would give the desires of the heart, but it's based off of the desire concerning his will. What it is that he would have. What do you want, God? When do you want me to have it? So my prayers are based off of how the Lord instructs and how the Lord sets for things to be. It's done been many things I have said, no, not now. Mm-mm. It ain't time. I ain't messing with that right now. Not right now. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Because when you're disciplined, you know what you need. You're you yourself. You know when it's time. You know if you're really ready. You know. And so it presents itself. So I just wait. I just wait. If you're governing according, prayer is the most powerful thing. There is. There's nothing greater than prayer. Because prayer is communication. It's fellowship with God. That's conversation with the man himself. Ain't no middle man. That's conversation with the man himself. That's going straight to the throne. Going straight to the throne. Now you get that by way of saying in Jesus name because that's the access. Because that means that you acknowledge what Jesus came into the earth to do. And who he is, not who he was. But you acknowledge who he is because he's still that. He's still that Jesus. He still carries that same power. So it is the accessibility. It is the open sesame that allows you to get straight to the Father, which is the throne room. So the greatest thing that could ever happen is to be able to have fellowship with the Father. Hmm. The greatest thing is to be able to have fellowship with the Father. If you work in a company, you deal with the managers, but it ain't nothing like having access to the CEOs. See, prayer is access to the CEO, the CFO, all of them. He's all of them. And prayer is having straight divine access to him. And so when there is straight divine access to him, that's an honor and a privilege. God, help me. That's an honor and a privilege. That's an honor and a privilege because, you know, even in the natural, they'll try to block you from getting to them CEOs and all. It ain't easy to do. It just ain't. For some reason, they want to have them secured in a glass office. Where it's hard, what did you go through the chain of command? Huh? Yeah, they love to say that. Did you go through the chain of command? Huh? And did you talk to your supervisor or your lead lead person? See? They want to so say it's hard to get to them CEOs and CFOs or however, but now when it comes to God, when it what well, Jesus, look at that. What the wind blew in. Well, praise God. So it's hard to get to them, the CEO, CFO, hard. But God, look at what God does. Comes in. God brings it in. Shows up. Boom. Poof. There it is. You got access to be able to get to him. So prayer is the most powerful entity and force that could ever be used. Your ability to get straight to God. And the thing that gets us straight to God is when we acknowledge Jesus for who he is. That's why the Bible says no man can really say that he believes in Jesus or that he is the son of God. 
He cannot say it except the Father has literally revealed it unto him. And so conversation would come, and he proves that by conversation with Peter. Because he says to Peter, who do men say that I am? Huh? Who do men say that I am? Peter comes back and says, thou art the Christ. The son of the living God is how he responded. He didn't respond by saying, well, you know, um, I don't really know for real. All I know is, is I'm just hanging around you. You know, it was just something about the fact that I liked how the crowd was following you or what have you. No, Peter comes back and says, thou art the son of God. The son of the living God is exclusively what he said. And Jesus turns and says to him, he says, listen here, Simon by Jonah, he talked to him from the state of the condition of who Peter actually was. He spoke into the existing nature of who Peter actually was. He says, listen here, Simon by Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed this thing to you. You did not get this from your natural intellect. Uh Uh-uh, something greater has spoke to you concerning this. He says, but my father, which is in heaven, has revealed this to you. This is not something that you could just get. This ain't something, boy, you just woke up with. But this right here came from a revelation. This right here came from an impartation. This came from my father exclusively talking to you. So that means that prayer is the greatest force that there will ever be in this world. There ain't nothing more greater than somebody that has the ability to pray. There's nothing more powerful than somebody that can stand in the face of God and they can talk to God regarding things. The Bible says that they can come boldly before the throne of grace. It's something about someone that's not afraid to step boldly before God and say, listen, man, this is the position that I am in. And it doesn't matter whether they are a person that has messed up, uh, tore up from the flow up and all. But if they step boldly before God to say, listen, now, here I am again, broken down, dear fiend. Here I am again, God. But my heart, Lord, wants to do what is right. My heart and my desire wants to do what is right. Here I am again. Messed up, Lord. Here I am again. Done done it again, God. Could you please, Lord, help me? At some point in time, I'm going to have to get bigger than this. But I'm going to keep bothering I do, God. I ain't gonna quit. I ain't gonna stop till I get the breakthrough that I'm after. Yeah, I fell last night. But Lord, here I am again, messing with you again. I'm not gonna stop because I realize that at some point you're gonna do something for me. Yeah, here I am. I push past all the stuff I said. I push past all the stuff I did. I push past what they said. And here I am again. I'm not going to quit. Yes, God. Yes, God. I refuse to stop. Yes, God. I'm not going to quit. Yes, God. I need to get to God. Yes, God. I love every one of y'all, but could you please move? Yes, God. I need to get to yes, God. God. Could I get you to please yes, step out the way, ma'am? Because if not, I'm running you over. Because I got to get to God. What's wrong with you? I'm bleeding. Do you hear me? I'm bleeding. And I've been bleeding 12 years. Rhoda, I might need y'all to get out the way. You understand? I got a flow of blood that's done mess me up. Why did it mess you up? I done paid all these physicians. I've been everywhere trying to get this flow to stop, and it still won't stop. I'm going to need you. I said, Delphine, don't kick the stand over. I'm going to need y'all to move out my way. Do you understand? If I got to crawl to him, I'm going to get to him. You can bet that. Because I don't realize can't nobody stop my flow, Toya, like he can stop my flow. I don't stood in the face of a man and said, I've been bleeding for a while. But what's wrong with you, ma'am? Man, I've been bleeding so long, I don't know what to do. Is there something that you can do? Do you have a remedy? And he said, listen, all I can do is write you some birth control pills to try to stop that flow. But baby, something was still going on with me, and it couldn't stop my flow. Could I get y'all to move for a minute? Because I got to get to him. You hear me? 
here. I got to get over there, right over there. Where you got to get? I got to get to him. I don't care who trying to stop me. I ain't going to quit. Do you hear me? I'm not going to stop. Well, girl, why did you let yourself bleed 12 years? I don't know why I let myself bleed 12 years. But the 12 year is over. It won't be 13. I can bet you that. Huh? Do you understand? Girl, how was you a fool for so long? I don't know how I was a fool for so long. But I ain't now no more. Yes, God. Yes, God. At some point, it's going to stop. Yes, huh? At some point, it's going to quit, Toya. They take a plan. Huh? At some point, it's going to quit. Huh? Uh-huh. At some point, I ain't going to be like this forever. You